Welcome back to Martial Art World. In our first story, we will meet Michael DePasquale Jr., a very remarkable man. Not only does he teach full-time, he is also the publisher of a hot new magazine called International Karate. Xi'an DePasquale also finds time to help with a number of worthy causes, like the Federation of United Martial Artists. And now we go to roving reporter George Strickland for the story. George Strickland for the martial art world, and we're here on West 72nd Street at the West Side Studios. Standing next to me is Mike DePasquale Jr., who's the editor of Karate International. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Tell us about the Ninja Kai system. Well, Ninja Kai system came about when I basically uh, started to teach different aspects of the arts, and it got a little bit confusing to me to teach uh, one thing and only one thing because I was starting to use different movements in my technique. So what it, what it came about was basically the nin in ninjuka means the spirit of the nimpo, okay, which everybody knows the philosophy and the spirit behind the nimpo. Uh, the ka, uh, ninju rather, the ju means the judo and the jujitsu aspect of it. Uh, as much as you use that in uh, the uh, ninjuka system, the jujitsu and the judo aspect of it, and the street end of it, as far as the self-defense. It's basically a street fighting art, and the ka is the karate end of it. So there's kicking involved in it, there's punching involved in it, uh, there's also armbar locks involved in it, um, takedowns, judo throws. You're also a founder and director of the Federation of United Martial Artists Against Crime. Crusade Against Crime, yeah. I founded that in 1982. Uh, it's an organization that uh, basically deals with uh, helping people fight crime in America and reducing the incidence of violent crime in America by having the martial arts, not going out uh, like the Guardian Angels, they do their job. What we do is basically teach uh, people how to defend themselves physically by going out and doing seminars, uh, teaching handicapped individuals, teaching women, uh, teaching people uh, that are senior citizens to get involved in programs that deal with the ways to avoid physical confrontation as well as how to uh, defend yourself physically. So uh, it becomes a real necessity. Rich Faustini right now is uh, running the program for me. Uh, again, I, I'm involved heavily in it, but he is the representative, U.S. representative. I have uh, Vince Marchetti working with me and a bunch of other people throughout the country working with me. So it's been a pleasure so far, and it's a nonprofit organization working real hard to get people involved in the organization. You're, uh, for such a young man, you have uh, had such a lu an illustrious career. Uh, what do you attribute that to? Well, uh, primarily I was raised in the martial arts. My dad, uh, who has taught me just about everything I know, since I've been about five years old, he's uh, been involved in the martial arts about 45 years. I've been involved for about 30 years. Uh, I attribute it to the discipline that he's given me, the work that he's instilled upon me uh, to, to make sure that I've really uh, gone forth and set my goals at a high level. So I've reached those goals primarily at this point, and I'm going for bigger and better things. I've also been involved in, actively in publishing uh, some books. I have six books. These are four of the books I have. Martial Arts for Young Athletes, which is one of them, <coughs> Simon & Schuster. This one is a uh, book that was a British publication, Hamlin, Step-by-Step -step Guide to Martial Arts. Woman's Guide to Self-Defense, <coughs> which is another book I had out in 1980. And my first book, which was Monarch Illustrated Guide to Jiu-Jitsu. And this book uh, came out in 1977. So, uh, you know, well established. I've uh, been involved in a lot of different activities. I have an, my own system called the Ninju Ka system involved with that. Uh, also, Yoshitsune Waza, which is what my father had taught me, which involves the Kito Ryu Jiu Jitsu, the Sekiguchi Ryu Jiu Jitsu. And uh, primarily, I've been involved in a lot of different martial arts throughout my life. I'm very proud of my students, very proud of the work that. Uh, you know, they put forth within me. Uh, is when they work, I work. I work to teach them as long as they're working to learn. That's the, that's the key. That's the key principle. But I think that goes without saying anything. If you have a class that wants to learn, you're, you're going to be more than willing to teach them. So anytime you want to learn, you let me know. You can join the class. Certainly. Also, I have a comic coming out. I want you to know that. A comic's coming out in April. A comic coming out uh, along pub my, with my publisher, Gail Uhlenberg, who's helped me quite a bit with the publishing end of uh, my art. And these are some of the, some of the boards from the comic. Uh, just to give you an idea, it's exciting. And I have a comic code, Seal of Approval. This is Skeeto. This is one of the boards. This is a, obviously a large version of the board. And this is part of the storyboard. 
And there he is down in his dungeon, speaking to his sidekick, Nigork. Okay, and then over here we have one of the other boards. I'll show you just a few boards. That's Torok, his devious face. And Skeeto there on his throne. So uh, I think the kid's going to get a kick out of it, as well as guys like you and me of get a course. kick out of this. Of so it's going to be kind of exciting. Hopefully, I have a lot of people right now interested in doing uh, different things with it, such as uh, animated television, uh, toys, things like that. But I'm holding, you know, I'm waiting. And I think we're going to move on it when the time is right. So I think everybody's going to be really excited about that. One of the other things that I'm doing right now is uh, I'm teaching. Uh, a handicap course for uh, handicapped people in New Jersey, which is FUMA related. We do a lot of programs in New Jersey in the metropolitan area that deal with the uh, FUMA uh, Crusade Against Crime. Done programs for senior citizens, for handicapped, for women. This is one of the articles, a recent picture from last week's paper, two handicapped people in a wheelchair, which I'm te I've, I've just taught them how to protect themselves uh, against different attacks. Real difficult to, to teach them, but the name of it is Disabling Their Fears. And they're really learning. It's a it's pleasure to teach them. And I'll tell you, there's all the money in the world. You, you can't get a better feeling when you're teaching people that really want to learn because they need to learn. And they want to learn. That's, that's such a fantastic... Oh, that's the true spirit of martial arts. You got it right. Because as long as you're healthy, you can do everything. And you see people that are not healthy, that have disabilities, and they can't do what you do, you want to teach them because it's, it's a need for them to learn. Because they're the ones that, the, obviously, the people that are attacking, the attackers go after first. That's not true. guys like you and me, especially you. I wouldn't want you to come after me. In the demonstration today, what were some of the techniques we saw? Oh, you saw a combination of techniques. Uh, you saw some ninjuka combat drills. You saw uh, some judo throws, which were uh, performed by primarily by Nancy Trigiani, the woman that was uh, demonstrating that. And also, uh, Armin Simone was doing some judo, but uh, a lot of jiu-jitsu technique, a lot of close-range jiu-jitsu technique. Uh, again, what's, what you saw there was a uh, great performance of combat self-defense, combat jiu-jitsu, combat ninjuka. You know, it's close range, so without a lot of room, you really don't have the room to move. And we don't want to look pretty. We're not, we're not interested. We can. We can do kata as well and look pretty just like your Aikido kata, your Jiu-Jitsu kata, but when it comes to the street-oriented uh, arts, street-oriented fighting, we want to look uh, like we're strong. We want to look like we're showing somebody something that is real, and that's basically what it is, as you can see there. And they make mistakes, uh, no doubt about that. We're not afraid to make mistakes because on the street, you can't afford to make mistakes. So when it comes to the dojo, we don't mind making mistakes there because if we can perform quick, steadily, strong, there's not going to be any mistakes on the street. I'd rather see someone get clocked in the dojo than on the street. So, Well, I want to thank you for being on our show today. And once again, I'd like you to uh, take a look, viewers at home, at the magazine that will be out shortly. In fact, it's out now on the stands. Mike, how could someone contact you if they wanted to attend your school? Uh, they can contact me by phone, uh, area code 201-573-8028. That is the office number. You will find somebody there. Uh, and I will get back to them if they do contact me and I am not there. Also, I'm in Norwood. I'm in Maywood. I'm in Washington Township. I have several schools, so I'm always available. Also in the magazine, it has uh, my seminars. It has a number there, so if they pick up the magazine, they can reach me through the magazine as well. And anybody who has anything they want to say when they do pick up the magazine, more than willing to look at it, and uh, if they want to write, feel free. The magazine is everybody's magazine. It's not just my magazine or your magazine. It's everybody. We are coming back with the Chinese New Year and more on Martial Art World. Stay tuned. Now, in this fast-paced video cassette, Coach Bobby Knight uses clips from actual games and practice sessions at Indiana University to teach you how to watch basketball like he does, like a winning coach. Most players, fans, and even coaches view the game by watching the scoreboard and following the bouncing ball. Coach Knight teaches the winning way. You're going to see one of the most interesting and intriguing, perhaps the most interesting part of basketball, and that's the game played away from the basketball. Knight takes you away from the ball and into the very heart of the game. He shows you how to look for things that will tell you what's going to happen before they happen. Long before the scoreboard tells you, you'll learn who's controlling the game and why. This is a must video for basketball fans, players, coaches, men and women. Not only will your knowledge and enjoyment of the game be improved, but you'll gain a rare insight into the thought processes of one of the most brilliant minds in the game. Call now for Bobby Knight on Basketball, a must video for any basketball fan. Call now, toll free, one 800 453 3 5500